Welcome to Math Bites. They say if aliens ever tried to contact us, they'd use math, because math is the universal language. Or is it? I'd say love is a universal language, but that's just because, you know, I like kissing and stuff. Are you nuts? I mean, watch Star Wars, watch Star Trek. Mostly, the universal language is English. With some Klingon in there, and Wookiee. As it turns out, the 10 digits we use today, 0 through 9, aren't used in every country. Nope, just like there are other alphabets, there are other numeral systems, too. No way. You're probably familiar with Roman numerals. Yeah, totally. I is 1, V is 5. I do crossword puzzles, so... I do crossword puzzles. Really? Yeah. yeah awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Roman numerals are really hard to do complex arithmetic with because they don't even have a zero digit. So mostly we just use them on analog clocks and watches because they look cool. I really like your shirt. Oh, thanks. It's a little small. Well, I mean, it's, I work out. I have a setting on my phone that shows me the time in Roman numerals. Hashtag brag. Our digits, 0 through 9, are called Arabic numerals because they were introduced to Europe in the Middle Ages by the Arabs of North Africa. Not to be confused with a numeral system used in Arabic countries today, better known as the Eastern Arabic numerals, which the Arabs actually call Hindi numerals. I, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm just giving those guys their space. So the Arabic numerals. Ooh, is it okay to say Arabic? I think that's a slur. <laughs> that's just what they're called. I it's... mean, it's making me a little uncomfortable. Okay, um... Seriously, we don't say Arabia anymore. And do we say Arabs? I think not. I think we say Middle Eastern. <laughs> Since Arabic numerals originally came from ancient India, the Arabs call them Hindu numerals. Not to be confused with the other name for Eastern Arabic numerals, Hindi, that I mentioned before. Yeah, that doesn't sit well with me either. Of course it doesn't. To top it all off, many Indian-speaking countries use an entirely different system. And in Asian countries today, even in modern Japan, some still use Chinese numeric characters. So when they say math is the universal language, they mean the concepts and principles are universal, not the actual language of math, per se. You mean maths, right? In Australia, we call it maths. And that's why you gave the Australian run of the book the title, Maths Doesn't Suck, as opposed to the American version, Math Doesn't Suck. Both great books, available on Amazon.com. Click the link below. Are you doing an advertisement in the middle of your math show? No. No, that guy was. And who's that guy? My literary agent. Uh, yeah, so I did a British version too. It's a potato-potato thing. But this math versus maths issue really isn't an important distinction. It's math, so math, I chose a path. I said it's math. That sounds so funny, like it's plural. Please, it's not plural, it's singular. You know, chemistry, history, math. Physics? Yes. You want weird? In Bulgaria, they shake their heads for yes and nod their heads for no. That's true. I shot a movie there once. Very confusing. Was that cut? Speaking of other countries, it's worth noting that the U.S. is lagging behind in math education. Some contend that math in other countries, like Singapore, is radically different somehow, and that's what puts them ahead of the U.S. in terms of math performance. It couldn't possibly be that our society views math as antisocial and not one of the avenues to achieving reality TV fame and therefore a waste of time. Oh my gosh! It's so exciting! <laughs> anyway, I'm doing a thing here. I, I, you might have seen this Japanese method of multiplying circulating the web where everyone's like, wow, math is so much better in Japan. They have you multiply something like 123 times 231. You draw these lines, circle the intersections, blah, blah, blah. There's your answer. As opposed to our typical boring method of using, you know, actual multiplication. It all seems great until you try something like 89 times 57 where the digits themselves are larger. And then it becomes a big hot mess. Yeah, the viral videos don't tend to mention that little detail. Wow, what a scam. Well, I don't think they meant it as a scam. I think it's just more of a... What do you guys think? We're getting married! Congratulations! Congratulations. <laughs> It'll never uh, last. What did you say? Nothing. Danica, weren't you just saying something about math? 
I was just talking about how kids from Asian countries typically outperform Americans, not a big deal. <laughs> We're raised here to think that math is pointless and has nothing to do with our financial savviness or success later in life, and Asian societies on the whole put enormous pressure on kids to succeed in math, which results in high scores, but also high stress. Balance, people. There is a way to teach math better and make it more fun, not more stressful. <sighs> but I could write a book about that. And you have four magnificent books available for purchase now. That's enough, Marty. Time for takeaway tips. The takeaway tips are just little tidbits of mathy goodness to make you look smarter at cocktail parties. Today's tips, number one. We use Arabic numerals because they were introduced to Europe in the 10th century by the Arabs of North Africa. Second tip, that Japanese multiplying trick is a bit of a nightmare if an eight or a nine is involved, reducing the entire thing to a novelty, not a superior style of executing multiplication, I-M-H-O. And third tip, there are many different numeral systems on this big planet of ours, so while math concepts are universal, math as a language is nearly universal, but not quite. Love still wins on that front. A kiss is still a kiss, you know what I mean? Thanks for watching the World Math episode of Math Bites. But do all those shopping sales and crazy percent signs get you down? And do you really like pancakes? I mean, really like pancakes? Then you're gonna love the percents episode. Click here to watch now. And don't forget to subscribe to Nerdist. And for actual lessons on percents, click here for Math Doesn't Suck and my other math books too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Twitter.